Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we're going to talk about a topic that the Tesla Twitter world is abuzz with. If you've been online at all today, you've probably seen some articles or some tweets about it, and that is silicon nanowire. So we're gonna go through exactly what that is and what its potential relevance to Tesla may be. Before we get to that though, if you are looking for some of the other news today, I did an episode earlier today with Jim Cramer, so just wanted to point that out in case you did miss it, since we're just gonna focus on this one topic in this particular episode. All right, so where this story starts is with Tesla's battery day. They announced recently that they will be doing a random drawing to determine which shareholders are able to attend their shareholder meeting and battery day on September 22nd. This drawing is due to the extremely limited capacity available for the event because of COVID safety precautions. Some of you have already extremely kindly offered your place if you were to happen to win this drawing. These are non-transferable though and no guests. So it is, if you win, you have to go yourself but I would still encourage everyone to apply. This would be a once in a lifetime opportunity to go if you were chosen. So anyway, Tesla will be live streaming both of these events and alongside this announcement, they made public the page that they will be hosting that live stream on and the background is pretty interesting and has sparked the speculation that I'm talking about today. If you haven't seen that page yet, it just says 2020 annual meeting of stockholders and battery day and behind that text is an image which appears to be a series of dots sort of clustered together in line formation. So with Tesla and Elon being no stranger to teasers, this has sent the internet into a bit of a tizzy trying to figure out what this may represent. This is where the silicon nanowire speculation has come into play. So let me explain a little bit of background on why the speculation has been so rampant today, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the actual technology. So first off, silicon nanowire is a technology that could be used in a battery anode to increase energy density. There's a company in California called Amprius that is currently producing batteries utilizing this technology. From a couple images on their website, we can see that there is a passing resemblance between that technology and the background image on Tesla's website. Making things even more interesting is that Amprius's headquarters is actually right across the street from Tesla's Cato Road and Page Avenue facilities, where Tesla is testing their new Roadrunner battery technology. Furthermore, they actually just moved their headquarters there this January. So, okay, things are starting to look a little bit suspicious there. Maybe these silicon nanowires are what Tesla is showing in this background image. So what even is this technology? Well, to understand that, we just have to do a refresher quick on how a battery works. Basically, a lithium ion battery operates by shifting lithium ions from the anode to the cathode through the electrolyte as the battery is discharged, and then back from the cathode to the anode through the electrolyte as the battery is recharged. So of course, using different materials in the cathode or in the anode can change how that reaction happens and can change the fundamental properties of a battery. So oftentimes when it comes to Tesla, we're concerned about a couple different aspects, mainly the energy density, whether that is gravimetric or weight energy density or volumetric or size energy density. And then in addition to those, cost. Generally cost is a factor of manufacturability as well as raw materials. Then of course there are a whole bunch of other factors to consider. A big one is the number of cycles you can get out of the battery before significant degradation happens. So that cycle life is what we're often talking about when we refer to Tesla's million mile battery goal. So back to the silicon nanowire. Silicon has been researched for a long time for its potential use as an anode because compared to graphite, silicon can hold a lot more of those lithium ions. In fact, that capacity is about 10 times greater for silicon than a traditional carbon-based anode. That's where you get your energy density. So why doesn't everybody just use silicon in their anode? Well, the downside is that it's pretty tricky to work with and still get high cycle life out of because silicon expands as it takes on those lithium ions, which understandably can cause a lot of problems, particularly what is known as mechanical fracturing or cracking, which dramatically and irreversibly lowers the energy capacity. There can also then be issues with the interaction between the electrolyte and the anode, also impacting the functionality pretty significantly with each charge cycle. So obviously some technical challenges there. What Tesla has done and what some other manufacturers have done is integrate silicon with a graphite anode as just a smaller percentage of the anode. Elon actually talked about this back in 2015 when Tesla first unveiled ludicrous mode on the Model S. He said, quote, we're shifting the cell chemistry for the upgraded pack to partially use silicon in the anode. This is just sort of a baby step in the direction of using silicon in the anode. We're still primarily using synthetic graphite, but over time, we'll be using increasing amounts of silicon in the anode, end quote. Okay, so we know Tesla has interest in adding more silicon. They probably have continued to do that over the years. 
We haven't really seen a breakthrough from that. It's been more incremental, but maybe Tesla is ready now, finally, with Battery Day to announce something like that. Making things even more interesting, fanning the flames further, is a Reddit post from around that time in 2015. Credit to Holmars for sharing this out on Twitter, by the way. But in that 2015 Reddit thread, somebody replied to the topic of a silicon anode and said, quote, Someone in my lab just told me Amprius was doing a trial run with Panasonic for the past couple of years, so I guess this makes sense. Some talk of going to a complete silicon anode by 2020. This is a huge effing deal technology-wise, end quote. So, obviously file that under the extreme speculation category, but interesting to see at least some rumors of a tie-in between Amprius and Panasonic all the way back in 2015. Anyway, just a lot of things all lining up here to make this worth looking into, so specifically more on this nanowire technology. Amprius says that, quote, In 2007, researchers at Stanford University discovered a solution to the problem associated with silicon in batteries. Using new techniques in nanotechnology, they were able to store lithium in tiny silicon nanowires. These nanowires are about one thousandth the thickness of a sheet of paper. The silicon nanowires still swell when they take up lithium, but the nanotechnology keeps the silicon from fracturing and breaking apart. The result is the world's first 100% silicon nanowire anode for lithium ion batteries, and Amprius Technologies was formed to bring this revolutionary battery technology to the world." End quote. So Amprius does actually have this technology, these batteries, in production right now. They have actual customers, most notably Airbus, which has used Amprius's batteries in a solar-powered aircraft, an unmanned aircraft that operates as a high-altitude pseudo-satellite at about 70,000 feet. The last information I was able to find, which was from a really helpful Fortune article, went into a lot of detail, said that Amprius did about $50 million in revenue in 2018. Over the course of their history, they've raised about $140 million. Amprius's CEO, Kang Sun, also had a few interesting quotes in this article. He said, quote, we have to scale up 30 times bigger, otherwise we cannot make money, end quote. And specifically about that contract with Airbus, he said, we charge them a crazy price, and that kind of price is not sustainable. Quote, if it cannot scale up, it will die, end quote. Additionally, despite the fact that on their website, Amprius describes the life cycle of their batteries as excellent, Fortune, after spending a lot of time with the CEO, says, quote, one downside is that they don't withstand as many discharges and charges as conventional batteries, something Amprius is working to improve, end quote. Fortune also says that the technology does remain buggy, though this was back in 2019, followed by a statement from the CEO saying, quote, we're not out of the woods yet. End quote. With those caveats, the technology is definitely exciting. They're able to achieve a 435 watt hour per kilogram specific energy density in the batteries being used for that Airbus airplane. But I think this may finally give us our best hint of where things start to fall apart in terms of a connection with Tesla. Elon on Twitter today replied to a tweet from Sam Chorus of ARC mentioning a 400 watt hour per kilogram energy density and alluding to the Cato Road facility's location and its proximity to Amprius. Elon replied to that, saying, quote, 400 watt hours per kilogram with high cycle life produced in volume, not just a lab, is not far, probably three to four years, end quote. In the past, Elon has talked about 400 watt hours per kilogram being the threshold that would enable an electric vertical takeoff and landing airplane. So this tweet in and of itself is exciting, but I think it also shows that because Amprius's silicon and wire batteries are already at 435 watt hours per kilogram, and Elon is saying 400 is probably three to four years away, it doesn't seem like Tesla's going to be announcing that sort of technology at Battery Day next month. Maybe Tesla would talk about the technology in terms of a future roadmap, or maybe they're doing it in a very, very small scale for a plaid powertrain. I certainly can't rule those out as possibilities, but I think at this point, taking in all this information, it would be a little bit surprising to me. From everything I've read, it doesn't seem like the technology is quite there yet to have a use case for Tesla. And it seems like the main challenge is complexity of manufacturing and production right now, leading to those high costs, which Tesla would be well suited to address, of course, but it just doesn't seem like we're at that point in time yet. As for the seemingly suspicious move of Amprius's headquarters right next to Tesla, well, it is an industrial park, and in the Fortune article, the author does provide a little bit more color on this, saying, quote, This summer, Amprius is moving to a different office. It's moving because its lease wasn't renewed, but it will pay lower rent, end quote. So just the structure of that sentence makes it sound like, at least to me, that that was the building owner's decision rather than Ambrius's decision to specifically move next to Tesla. 
Now, all this being said, that doesn't necessarily rule out Tesla and Amprius working together. Amprius is also working on other silicon technology, again from the Fortune article last year. Quote, it's a nanoscale structure of silicon manufactured as a powder and then combined with traditional graphite powder. The resulting graphite silicon mixture is run through a conventional battery plant. This modest silicon boost typically raises a battery's energy density by up to 15% beyond a traditional lithium ions battery. That's far less than the improvement from the silicon nanowire material, but it's radically cheaper. End quote. Fortune also notes that specifically Amprius was supplying the material to various US, European, Japanese, Korean, and Chinese automakers for testing last year. So maybe Tesla could be working with Amprius on something like that, although that starts to get more into the territory that it sounds like Tesla is already playing in a little bit, mixing graphite and silicon in the anode. Further dashing the hopes a little bit for the nanowire technology is a tweet today from Shirley Meng, professor and battery researcher, saying, quote, we should pay attention to the cost per kilogram, even if those nanowires work, which I doubt, to produce consistent quality and metric ton scale at $10 per kilogram, it will be sci-fi for now, end quote. So I don't know, maybe we're back to square one on what that background image might be, or maybe Tesla will announce some sort of four-year roadmap to implement this technology in high volume at an affordable price. The reason not to do that would obviously be Osborning your own product line, so I definitely don't expect something like that, but there would be a benefit of doing that. If Tesla showed a really clear path to making electric vehicles just completely dominant in every single way, that would reduce the current investments being made into internal combustion engine powertrains, at least it should. That would be assuming that the competitive marketplace would take those claims seriously though, and all the investors would as well, which, as we have seen over the last decade, seems unlikely. Probably not enough reason to risk the Osborning. So I know that was a lot to go through and maybe is only going to end up being tangentially relevant to Tesla, but I hope that it was still informative. Let me know if we have other speculation on what the background image for Battery Day could be. But that will wrap it up for this episode. Again, if you missed the Jim Cramer discussion earlier, please check that out as well. As always, huge thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe, sign up for notifications, and make sure you're following me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast. I'll see you tomorrow for the Tuesday, August 25th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.